day of the first month of 2011, January 31st, 2011, on this live Monday edition. I can't think of a better time to have our uh, regular uh, guest and analyst, Webster Tarpley, uh, joining us coming up uh, in the second hour today. And then the once a month visit of Max Kaiser on the rebellion popping up all over the Muslim world from Saudi Arabia uh, through Jordan, uh, not just Tunisia with that government falling a week and a half ago. And of course, uh, all of it uh, centering in and around Egypt, uh, also rebellions going on in Yemen. And I don't default blame George Soros and the U.N. and the globalists for something until I see evidence. And last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I said, look, the people there are starving. The people there have been under a dictator for 30 years. And they're ripe for revolution. And I just can't see why the globalists would want to remove Hosni Mubarak unless it's a strategy of tension to destabilize the whole region which we know they tried to do with Saddam Hussein the first time and succeeded the second time in 2003. First time in 1991, second time 2003. And so when they know a country is ripe for revolution, the globalists know how to trigger it themselves to then come in and take over. Now, I wasn't sure of that on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, but by Friday evening, I have the Associated Press, the London Telegraph, uh, Egyptian newspapers, and, and now it's admitted that this Mohammed el Baradi, the former head of the U.N. Atomic Energy Agency, U.S. trained, heavily hooked in above CIA, Davos, Bilderberg, you name it. This guy is a complete globalist, and now it's admitted he arrived a week before the demonstrations began and gave speeches about a rebellion, and that the West, uh, again, above our governments, these, these private banking think tank interlocking systems that control our governments, are moving to run Hosni Mubarak out of Egypt and destabilize the entire country. And now Zbigniew Brzezinski is basically calling for him to leave. Now, uh, the globalists admitted on Saturday, we covered this on the Sunday show yesterday, that, well, if they openly call for Hosni Mubarak to step down, that then the anti-Western and anti-Israel fervor uh, would uh, shift against the West and in favor of Hosni Mubarak. And so they're organizing the rebellion in the streets, triggering a powder keg that was already there and legitimately angry, but then publicly backing off and supporting Hosni Mubarak, the dictator, so that he won't uh, get support from the population, waking up to the fact that a new puppet uh, is being brought in. And I have to say, on Wednesday of last week, we published a Tarpley article at Infowars.com that basically said all this. I said on air I wasn't sure if that was correct, uh, but now it's just admitted uh, that um, Mohammed el Baradi was there stirring it all up, and is completely backed by the financial dictatorship that runs our country and much of the Western world. Here's the London Telegraph, uh, Egypt protest, America's secret backing of rebel leaders behind uprising. And they don't just have, they don't just have uh, Mohammed el Baradi under their wing. They've got two or three or even four, depending on the country, layers of all the opposition on their payroll. So if he gets in and they rebel more and don't like it, as sometimes happens with these overthrows, you could have two or three presidents or prime ministers in the space of a week or a month, sometimes a year. It varies to where more shark teeth will just roll forward. Uh, just absolutely incredible. And the Muslim Brotherhood, known British slash Israeli intelligence, uh, you know, called radical Muslims by the media, uh, they're, meanwhile, uh, running around trying to overthrow another globalist ally. That's Jordan. The protests have flared up all over Saudi Arabia. We're going to talk about where this is going geopolitically. Look at the economy here and the Internet kill switch. Oh, they're back with it. We're live. It is Monday, the 31st day of January 2011. Webster Griffin Tarfley, expert on George Soros type, Zbigniew Brzezinski type financed overthrows of governments. Around the world will be joining us in the next hour. Max Kaiser with his once a month uh, visit on the economy and so much more will be joining us today uh, in the third hour. I want to open the phones up specifically.
for first-time callers who want to comment on what their view is of the entire uh, Middle Eastern, North Africa situation with blow-ups now happening in Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, obviously uh, Egypt, and of course Tunisia uh, that fell to a new government just a few weeks ago. And in every one of these cases, the West is bragging out of one side of their mouth uh, the George Soros, Davos, Switzerland uh, type crowd. This is even above government, the big banking cartels, the uh, Ponzi scheme operators that have been so successful they've taken the planet over through fraud. They are openly bragging all over the news that they have engineered this. And I just you know, don't go with their, uh, their crowing statements. I actually went and did, obviously, research on Muhammad el Baradi. Uh, and on the leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and others. And they are all openly globalist. Of course, uh, with Barity, there's no secret, the former head of the Atomic Energy Agency at the UN, trained at prestigious schools in the United States, uh, Davos, Bilderberg Group uh, attendee. Uh, clearly, uh, this is their new man for Egypt, even though Hazi Mubarak set up the torture camps, the secret arrest centers, uh, people worldwide flown in there to be brutally tortured, uh, their children to be tortured and even sexually abused in front of them. Uh, the CIA bragged in 2002 to the Washington Post that they were torturing kids in front of their parents uh, in Egypt. I mean, this is who runs our government. Offshore banks who were totally and completely ruthless and stabbed their minion Saddam Hussein in the back, stabbed their minion Hosni Mubarak in the back. They stab everyone in the back, and the globalists are stabbing America in the back. China devalues their currency as a tariff so that we can't compete. Plus, they have no environmental standards and sell us junk. Uh, the World Trade Organization rules against us in every case with China. That's the big central banks stabbing us in the back for their darling dictatorship in China. This is the globalist master plan. Play nations off against each other to make every nation on earth weak and the big mega central banks strong. Now... That said, uh, while we're busy watching what's happening in the Middle East uh, and North Africa, and we're going to be going over uh, all of that today, uh, PC World, The Age, uh, and others are all reporting that they are trying now to finish completion of the Internet kill system. And these are giant grids at AT&T and all the other major telecommunications companies that already have NSA snooping hubs built into them, in many cases entire buildings that have been built on or entire floors, that's all part of the public record. Uh, now they're hardwiring giant snooping systems to expand the snooping and to analyze encrypted packets uh, and uh, to analyze uh, obviously societal and business trends uh, to be fed back to the globalist and to shut the internet off entirely, crippling our society. One way they can launch this is claiming that there's been an Internet uh, cyber attack. Another way uh, that the globalists uh, can do this is to claim that they're protecting us from a cyber attack and had to shut it off. Again, A, they can attack the system, claim it's outsiders, bring the system down, and then use that as an excuse to bring in even more control in the name of protecting it. And that is more along their modus operandi. But they like to change it up. They can also run an outside attack and claim they're shutting the web off to protect critical infrastructure. They've publicly put out those trial balloons and said that's reasons they may do this. Or they may just piecemeal with the Internet ID, the Internet taxes, and the local uh, hubs that they're demanding under the Cybersecurity Act be put into place so that even if you try to set up local city or even neighborhood networks, by law they will jam and block those. Also, they're recruiting through the See Something, Say Something InfraGuard uh, system as a subdivision of SecureCorp, itself a subgroup of AmeriCorps, uh, and the Jobs to Work programs are openly announcing that they are going to recruit in mass, high schoolers and college students to man the giant cybersecurity systems that they're building nationwide in giant NSA command bases that will spy, subvert, post counter propaganda in their words, that is uh, openly trolling, uh, posting on message boards, putting out disinformation, uh, something CENTCOM for eight years admits they're already doing. 
We've also got developments coming up later dealing with now more than 40 states filing lawsuits uh, against government takeover of health care. And it's also come out uh, in the news today that not only is Obama uh, giving over now 500 businesses, including McDonald's franchise, waivers from government health care, meaning it's an unfair trade advantage against their competition that must purchase health care. But now... He's giving the Congress waivers and other federal employees. Uh, that's in the Washington Times. Uh, we're going to be covering that as well today. Also on the economic front, uh, I've told you that the highest interest rates were 35% on credit cards. That's now changed. Uh, the APR is now 599 This is what the big central banks are doing with the banker bailout money. We back it up as taxpayers, give it to them with zero interest. They then leverage it to infinity and loan it out on average at 14.72 and as high as 59.9 CNN reporting that. Of course, up until a few years ago, it was illegal to charge more than 30%. Now they're going directly to loan sharking rates of 59.9. Loan sharking historically has been about 25, but they let them go up to 30. Now they've changed the law as part of credit card reform to allow it to be unlimited. <laughs> That's how they reform things, to help you out. <laughs> oh, man. Whew. The order has gone out to just have unlimited tyranny upon the American people. But getting back to Egypt and how it bounces back to the U.S., Europe's put the kill switches in. The kill switches are now in in the U.S. They're getting everybody ready for a cyber attack at the 9,000 locations with the telescreens. One of the announcements is the head of cybersecurity that hasn't even gotten cabinet funding yet, hasn't been passed by Congress, but is in place, saying the Internet's under attack. Terrorists are about to hit it. The Internet's not safe. We're trying to protect it. Report bad things on the Internet to police. Just all part of a hysteria. Then they walk out front, see a guy on a cell phone. It turns into a gun. They call SWAT teams. It's all part of just the mental illness fleeing when none pursueth. Ignoring all the real crime, all the real terror, all the real corruption, and only focusing in on seeing phantoms in and around your neighborhood. But continuing here, as Egypt goes offline, U.S. gets Internet kill switch bill ready. This is out of the age in Australia. As Egypt's government attempts to crack down on street protesters by shutting down Internet and mobile phone services, and that's what this is really for. See, they know they're going in to the end of the American way, the end of the American way of life, the end of liberty, the end of wealth, the end of the engine of everything good. This is all by design, the post-industrial U.S. We're going into bondage. And so they've got to, just like with Egypt, they've got to have the grid in place. And it's not to stop al-Qaeda or the Chinese from attacking us via cyber. It's about shutting down the Internet when they have the bank holiday when they devalue your currency, or when they completely take your pension fund. They've already taken most of the veterans' pension funds and their death benefits. Bloomberg AP. The sky's the limit. They've trained local spy groups. They've trained the police to hate the American people. They've trained them to eat their own guts and ask for seconds. We are the enemy. The Marine Corps doesn't run and do chants about killing commies for mommy. They do chants about killing American school children. That came out uh, in Counterpunch and other publications a few years ago. They, they, they trained the troops to shoot their own mother in the drills. Will you shoot your mother if I tell you, sir? Yes, sir. And they have drills about locking cities down in the Army and Marines and National Guard. And, and, and the role players say, I'm your uncle. I'm your brother. Please don't take me. And you billy club them in the head and you take them to the truck and you load them. And you get that petty power trip while your bank account's being sucked dry, while your pension's being sucked dry. You're never going to get any health care. You're never going to get any property. You're never going to have any future. They're going to make you so poor and so overthrown that they can put all the fluoride in your food and water they want. And you know what? You're going to deliver. You like violent video games. You like violent culture. You think the devil's sexy. You festoon yourself with those symbols, you are going to get to drink from the cup of abomination. You love the curses of 51 million abortions. You love the curses of a million dead Iraqis. You love all the blood on our name, on our hands. You are going to get to drink from absolute abomination. 
You want pain. You want suffering. You want judgment. You want hell. You want degradation. The gates are now being opened. Everything that America wants dearly in their satanic heart, they will now get. The abomination churches worshiping global government, worshiping tyranny, telling their flocks to lay down under homeland security, cybersecurity training to tell their flocks to take the injections and go to the FEMA camps. Everything you want is now materializing. Everything you desire you, because you hate yourselves deep down and you want to be punished and you will be. Continuing, as Egypt goes offline, U.S. gets internet kill switch bill ready. The Russians got to sup from the cup of death. The Germans got to sup. The, the Cambodians got to sup. The Iraqis have got to sup with the banks that run our country funding them. And now you will get to sup. You want to sit down at this, at this bloody orgy? You want to sit down at this... At this, at this table laid bare with the futures of our children and literally eat their souls as your soul has been trafficked and sold to the old serpent? If you don't repent now and hit your afterburners to warn everybody and wake up and hit your knees and wear sackcloth and pour ashes over yourself, you are going to be gobbled up. You just watch. You want satanic government? You got it. We'll be right back. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are here live. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, I'm not trying to be negative, but Hitler killing tens of millions, Stalin killing tens of millions, Lenin killing tens of millions, Mao, Pol Pot, the list goes on and on. Think about Stalin killing conservatively 35 million people. Uh, conservatively 60 million under Mao. And our government, our so-called government, is now on record admitting they helped put Mao into power. And David Rockefeller and all these other globalists write articles and books about how great he was and how we need that system. Think of a million dead. That's 10 sports stadiums with 100,000 each. Men, women, children, little babies killed. Think of 64 million, that's the conservative estimate that Mao killed. 64 million murdered. Now, if that isn't black cup of abomination, if that isn't total degradation, think about 51 million people dead. How many sports stadiums is that? How many sports stadiums filled with 100,000 people is 51 million? That's how many babies didn't get to get born in America. So see, all this death goes on around us. And so we're shocked when tyranny starts rearing its head. We're shocked that the federal government would sign secret deals 11 years ago to begin stealing the death benefits of U.S. troops as they die. Of course they're going to get away with that. If they can steal tens of trillions of dollars and then Congress says, where's the money going, Federal Reserve? And they say, we're not going to tell you. And the former Fed head goes on Lair News Hour and says, we're above the law. Nobody can touch us or investigate us because they say so, because they're wearing a suit. Is there nothing we won't put up with? Is there no level of humiliation? My words can't describe what's been set up. The banks that have run the world for the last 70 years conservatively have funded dictators, have funded wars, have funded both sides of conflicts, and they're bringing a hellish system in. And then they admit all over the news that these big financial interests that run our country are overthrowing Hazi Mubarak to bring in another guy involved in torture and corruption? Another guy involved in all of this persecution? They got rid of Saddam and brought in more tyranny. It's actually accelerated now that Saddam Hussein is gone. They want it to be bad. They want to destroy these countries. They want you on your belly starving. They want you and myself and everybody else dead. That's their end game. They want us gone. They've bought up the world through fraud, and they are tired of looking at us. Notice how they fed the sounds of rioting and chanting that reminds me of Chicago last week said to make everybody happier, they're going to put up broadcasting towers that play the sound of tweeting and singing and chirping birds. 
See, the mindset is we're creatures in a laboratory. We're creatures on a slide in a Petri dish. And they're the social engineers manipulating us. But exactly as I said Sunday, once they began to admit that they were orchestrating this, the globalists, that they knew that there was a trigger coming for true freedom in Egypt. And so they sent their globalist stooge in with money and backing to go ahead and overthrow their old apprentice, their old puppet out, Count Dooku or Hazi Mubarak, and they're going to replace him with Darth Vader, Muhammad el Baradi. If you want to use a Star Wars analogy, we'll be right back. Stay with us. See the earth from here. It's a private banking cartel playing nations, races, religions off against each other. They then pose as the arbiter or the referee and the financiers to fix the crises that they create or that they energize. And so by Saturday and then by Sunday, it, beca it began to become completely, absolutely clear that the establishment knew that Egypt was on the edge of revolt because the IMF and World Bank in the last year had ordered them to institute austerity measures right at half their population, making under $2 a day. Many of their people starving or malnourished. The UN coming in saying they'd give them more money if they engaged in sterilization and abortion. That's been a big fight. And Hazi Mubarak could not, even though he's a dictator, he could not force that on the Egyptians. So the globalists have blocked Egypt from industrializing, which would have caused them to stop having as many children that the globalists think is so dangerous. And so while blocking their development, which then triggers larger populations in every case, then they come in and demand that uh, the abortion and the other eugenics operations be carried out. And that's clearly one of the main reasons the UN has been critical of the regime uh, in their 20 years of demands that they get busy killing their people like China has done. So extremely serious uh, situation there. And so they know that the people we're about to rebel and take their nation back. That scene is radical. Can't actually have a Middle Eastern country uh, run by the people. And so in comes uh, this Mohammed el Baradi, top globalist, top UN minion, top eugenicist uh, to carry out that operation. But then the U.S. has to tacitly approve of Hazim Mubarak so the population doesn't wake up to what's happening and actually give... Mubarak support once they realize that that's the dictator now out of favor with the new world order and, un and undoubtedly what they're about to get is going to be a lot worse. So the globalists put gas on the fire, fuel on the fire, accelerant on the blaze by making them cut the food allowances that again right at half the population is surviving on. And so you see millions of uh, very lean people on the verge of starvation, uh, malnutrition epidemic, hitting the streets for food, and don't worry, the man on the white horse arrives. Muhammad el Baradi, he will save you. And the Muslim Brotherhood that I hear neocons talking about being radical Muslims that want to get us, admittedly run by British, Israeli, and U.S. intelligence, trying now to overthrow Saudi Arabia. Openly the head of the Muslim Brotherhood saying they're going to overthrow Jordan, the big ally. Because they don't want Jordan with factories and hotels and fighter jets and uh, friendly uh, royalty and an elite wearing Armani suits. And, uh, you know, women sipping Coca-Cola on the, on the street corners uh, at the cafes. They want them like Iraq, truck bombings, guys running around with, you know, hoods on their heads, uh, screaming Allah Akbar, blowing up Shiites and uh, Sunnis, killing each other. The grand chessboard, destruction. You cannot serve the New World Order. You cannot lick their boots and have them leave you alone. Anyone who can stand, anyone who can tie their shoelaces is an enemy of the New World Order, including America. We're taught to have this lustful hate of the Muslims while Western governments bring them in as fast as they can. 
while the tax-free foundations, Carnegie, Rockefeller, uh, and other endowments, Ford, fund the radical Muslims, fund the liberation theology, fund the jihad, fund the takeover in the prisons, uh, which are giant uh, education centers for the Muslims to take over. They are creating that foreign enemy and then offering their solution just as they fund the Hispanic liberation, the black liberation, just as the FBI has been caught in the Southern Poverty Law Center and others running and infiltrating and, and, and controlling the white supremacist. And that's why the white supremacist, whether they know it or not, some of them are useful idiots at the bottom, hate this show so much because I call them out when it constantly gets revealed in lawsuits and court hearings that in every case, the commanders, the leaders of the Aryan nations, the commanders, the leaders of the white supremacist, of the Klan, uh, of the Elohim city, uh, of these marches through minority areas of cities, they're not infiltrated by feds. They are run by feds to make us fight with each other. Mecha, La Raza, Ku Klux Klan, Aryan Nations, Hal Turner, all of it to get us at each other's throats while the new world order brings in its tyranny. It's called balkanization, divide and conquer. Now, I listened to local radio this morning, local AM. Then I listened to local FM. Then I listened to national AM. Uh, then I checked the news listings for about three hours, scanning back and forth. And I heard this big demonization uh, of Hosni Mubarak because he did an Internet kill switch and shut the web off. And certainly, I mean, what do you think a dictator now in his Hitlerian bunker, as Der Spiegel points out, uh, surrounded on all sides, what do you think he's going to do? But none of them want to talk about the Internet kill switch our government has already constructed and has already built. As Egypt goes offline, U.S. gets Internet kill switch. Bill Reddy, The Age, Sydney Morning Herald. Uh, for some reason, the Australians are big on this. Uh, PC World, they're all reporting on it. Oh, but I don't hear those talk show hosts crying out against that. In fact, a lot of conservatives agree we need this because of Al-Qaeda, yes. And then they launch an attack on the web, say Al-Qaeda did it, shut the web down for a time, and when they roll out the new web, it's got all the controls in place that are already there. A nice false flag on our liberty, and they'll have the average liberal and conservative on talk radio, on TV, cheering, we're not going to let Al-Qaeda win, we've got a new unfree internet, that'll keep us safe, we've got to have this internet for commerce. As Egypt's government attempts to crack down on street protests by shutting down Internet and mobile phone services, the U.S. is preparing to reintroduce a bill that could be used to shut down the Internet. Yeah, I've got Lieberman, Jay Rockefeller, Obama all saying, while well, China's got it, we need to be able to shut the web off to protect it during a Chinese attack or an Al-Qaeda attack. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Then they lie and say, oh, they can shut off red lights, oh, they can shut off respirators. None of that, by law, can be hooked into the Internet. Oh, you can go up to a terminal on the side of the road and reprogram a sign if you've got the skills. One sign. You cannot. It's on its own network. It was initially introduced last year, but expired with the new Congress. Yeah, they say the terrorists are going to make the nuclear reactors go off. Really, when the U.S. and Israel made the Stuxnet three months ago, it, uh, a spy had to put it in with a thumb drive into the computer and into every piece of equipment that was separated. Globalist spies had to load it directly in because it wasn't hooked to the Internet even in Iran. Oh, but then our media said, we've got to give up our Internet freedom and have the kill switch because of Stuxnet. That happened right as they were lobbying to pass it. And then they later admit our own government with Israel launches the Stuxnet that bounces back on our countries in the West. And then they have no shame. They say, we've got to take over the Internet to stop Stuxnet. We've got to take your liberty because of Stuxnet that the terrorists launched. And they go, by the way, we launched it. As if common sense doesn't exist with a childlike, servile public. 
And I'm talking about that group in the public that is servile and crouches down to lick the tyrannical hand of the New World Order that loves it, that lives to grovel, lives to sound like second grade children gibbering on talk radio, filled with ignorance, repeating the false paradigm information they've downloaded. It was initially introduced last year, but expired with the new Congress Senator Susan Collins, a co-sponsor of the bill, so that unlike Egypt, where the government was using its powers to quell dissent by shutting down the Internet, it would not. Really, the administration admits they want to use it for that, and the White House science czar and the regulations are, and others have called for restricting people that disagree with the globalist. So has the FCC uh, commissioner. So has other members of the FCC board. I mean, you haven't heard the countless members of Congress calling for total censorship of free speech in America? What rock are you hiding under, Collins? Oh, let us turn the web off and have the power. But I promise, I promise, I promise we're the government. We don't lie. My legislation will provide a mechanism for the government to work with private sector. That means take it over. You ought to read the Cybersecurity Act in the event of a true cyber emergency. Yeah. Mm -mm. Collins said... In an emailed statement to Wired, it would give our nation the best tools available to swiftly respond to a significant threat. Exactly. The banks only got unlimited trillions with the banker bailout to save us from the bad financial decisions that weren't bad for them that they put in place with Glass-Steagall being removed. They create the crisis, think we have no memory, and offer the solution. Here's Wired. Communicate if your government shuts off your Internet. And what else did Egypt do? And then I'm going to your calls. They arrested people in mass. Opposition across the board and members of Al Jazeera saying that they're British intelligence. Of course, Mubarak always knew, knew that because... You know, he, he works partially for British intelligence. It's kind of the trifecta, the U.S., Israel, and England, all like triple Siamese uh, triplets. And that's what they're doing. And, of course, they arrested Al Jazeera. I mean, uh, it's come out that MSNBC, CNN, all of them are completely government funded. Your, your tax money goes through the subsidiaries to them. We have state-run media. But they always thought they could ignore shows like mine and the alternative media. But now that we're rivaling them, they're openly licking their lips saying they want to start shutting us down. And you notice Mubarak arrested the media, the foreign media. Mubarak has arrested all the opposition groups. Leadership. They sent army trucks around to everybody's house to arrest tens of thousands of people. What do you think they're training the army to do here? I've been to the drills to drive around, including picking up city council members, preachers, even people that have served them. Even people that have served them. They've done psychological assessments on them, or, or maybe the local government operative doesn't like you, so they put you on the list. So you go to a FEMA dungeon. And, of course, you've got to be inoculated for your own safety. Mm -hmm. They train for that. You show up, you're in a facility, and if you yell and scream and get angry, oh, I'm sorry, you're disruptive, you're going to the Brig facility. And waiting there are the compartmentalized contractors, and they strap you down to that gurney, and they start taking a ball-peen hammer and just smashing your fingers off. Oh, and they've been trained by the thousands. Maybe they take your kids in and start raping them in front of you. Then they take acid and pour it all over your children. Ha, 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 ha. That's your loving USA, USA. That's who runs our country, the same ones that funded Mubarak to do all of that. General Tagumbu's Army report, U.S. contractors and U.S. forces raping children with battery acid. Go read it. Army report on torture. Type that in. Of course, General Tagumbu got in a little trouble after he released that, uh, U.S. general. Oh, but that we had to do it to fight the terrorist. They might get us if we don't. No, they were forging an army of hell. They were forging an army of satanic dungeon keepers to be released on us and to trade larger cadres. Look, I'm not trying to scare you. This is the evil that we have created. Zbigniew Brzezinski, who I played earlier, bragged in two books that he wrote that 
He funded Pol Pot. And Pol Pot killed 30 million people. And he's proud of that. To the globalist, you are honored when you kill. You are honored with the more skulls you have hanging around, you know, the, the chains that bind their wicked souls. They love it. They live for it. They like it. It's like notches in their gun belt. Do you understand that? Okay. I got a bunch of other news. I said I'd go to your phone calls. We're going to go to calls till late after the Tarpley's joining us. Uh, right now, uh, let's go to Greg in California. Greg, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, how you doing? I just wanted to bring up a couple of uh, little points that um, I, I thought Clinton and Obama, right after, right when everything got really excited, it seemed that they had very well thought out, calculated words that, you know. Yeah, they, they're funding they, the they, revolution, but in case it doesn't work, uh, they say, oh, well, we want him to stand down while their armies that are funded are taking over. Right, but Jimmy Carter wouldn't make a difference. Um, and then I, I just thought it was interesting also that the uh, TSA had the big announcements the day before, and, um, you know, all the attention got off of that. That's instantly. right. They said, very... listen, we don't care if, if the law says you can have private screeners here. We're not going to allow that now. We run things. We're seizing your right, infrastructure. Exactly. It's all beta testing for what we're in store for. It's planting the seed expect, so we can expect to have our Internet shut down. And, uh, you know, just on top of everything, I just want to comment, uh, you know, I'm from Berkeley, Oakland, San Francisco. It's really diverse here. I have never met a rude Middle Eastern person in my life, you know, with all this money that we're, you know, putting towards this. It's, it's just ridiculous. No, they're trying to radicalize the Muslim world. This is where so many sciences, the alphabet, astronomy were developed, uh, chemistry, and they're very intelligent people. And they wanted to have liberty and freedom. And our criminal government, run by the banks, is on record putting radical Muslims in everywhere. And then taking our liberties in the name of fighting the radical Muslims. Right. They're very gracious people, you know. And uh, it's, you know, everything's, everything, no, no crisis goes to waste. It's what we can expect from our government. Absolutely. We're in a lot of trouble, Greg. Let's go to Jay in Michigan. Jay, you're on the air. Hey Alex, how you doing? Thanks for taking my call. Welcome. I got a, I got uh, two points I want to try to make and cook down in the soup of of chaos here. Um, first, to the corporatists, you know I've been in business for a number of years up here in Michigan in the automotive industry, and I can tell you there's a, a trend, a little thing that happens where a lot of a lot of tier two vendors that we work with will get bought up by big corporations. And then, yeah, stay, the stay there, stay uh, there. That is the infrastructure, the mid level infrastructure is being vertically integrated and consolidated. So the web is in the hands of just five or six big mega corporations. And under cybersecurity, it forces the little bitty teeny ISP to put physical homeland security snooping grids in. Puppet Mohammed El Baradi is demanding, of course, that Hazi Mubarak, the old worn out globalist uh, vampire, step down so that he can begin supping with pleasure at the throat of the Egyptian people. And like a swarm of carrion crows, of course, the bankers are expanding their forced collapse of this country. But before they can do that, They've got to have all the telescreens up telling you to watch your neighbors. They've got to have the police trained at the internal checkpoints, which they're now expanding. They've got to have their Internet kill switch in place. They'll probably partially shut the web down during a fake cyber attack, then turn it right back on to say, see, we're doing this to protect you. Just to set that precedent, Google announced, obviously, a week ago that they are going to start filtering out alternative media and blocking it. It's all happening. Right on time for the dollar devaluation and the confiscation of the pension funds. And uh, when you rebel, don't worry, they'll have a new solution for you, even more tyranny. Uh, only being aware of the complexities of this do we have any chance of stopping them. Uh, but going back uh, to, I guess it was Jay in Michigan uh, who was uh, bringing up uh, IT situations, go ahead. 
Uh, so to the point that I was making, and then I've got a quick question for you, which actually was in an IT situation. I'm in, I'm in the medical manufacturing business, formerly owned an automotive, automotive manufacturing business in Michigan. And one of the things that we're seeing happening right now that ties into the whole globalization and, and corporatization of the world is in automotive, all these small shops that were very productive, had an owner-employee relationships, treated their employees well, they would get bought up by these big corporate holding companies. Now I'm beginning to see the same thing happen in the medical sector, too. Well, that's what I was saying well, dealing with. Uh, that's what I was saying dealing with IT, because these big mega holding companies have unlimited fiat banker bailout money, paid for by our tax dollars. It's not free market. It's basically like playing Monopoly against the bank. You can't win. Well, absolutely. And, and what what happens? I mean, this is happening across industries worldwide. But what the killer is, is is that's it's it's part of the tactic of destroying the middle class. I mean, I got so worked up about this a few years ago. I actually took a run for state rep here in Michigan as an independent libertarian. And, you know, I, we're trying to find ways to deal with this. And, and I'm feeling like it's snowballing faster than can be handled through the conventional channels of government, um, like running for office, getting in position, and making changes. I, I just feel like the whole thing's running away. Um, you know, we're still trying to do it, and, and I've been doing a lot of homework trying to study. You know, you always when you when you talk about globalists, you talk about population growth. You know, how how is population growth affecting the snowball of this globalist attitude and trying to bring whole populaces under control? You know, near militant control, and and trying to come up with a timeline. You know, on how to react to this. Well, let's be clear, and I and, and I appreciate your call, but but uh, they're not trying to bring things under control. They're trying to wipe out any country or organization or group of people that are self-sufficient. They don't want things to be nice. They don't want it under control. They want things in a disheveled, collapsing situation so that they can expand their their overall police state in the name of cleaning up the crisis but then they never even fix the crisis because they go into the next phase of an even bigger crisis and then even more control to supposedly fix it and then another even bigger crisis and more control more control that's the method to their madness it's order out of chaos We'll be back with more phone calls in 70 seconds in the second hour than Webster Tarpley joining us and Max Kaiser. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.